Okay, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak here about my experiences in India and South Africa. Should there be a pointer here that I can use? We have a pointer. Oh, it's in a planetarium. Oh, it's like, I'll run and get it. Yes. So, I mentioned here several names uh, who have been involved in these programs in India and in South Africa, but of course Jonathan and Jan have been very helpful in initiating these things. And what we have been trying to propagate in all these places is how it is uh, useful across the board for enthusiasts, for amateur astronomers, educators, and for researchers. So the couple of workshops that we did have there were aimed at all these people, so we did not have any specialized ones for specific classes, and then we encouraged them to take uh, what they could and go out and propagate further and whatever. So there have been uh, returns coming slowly and it has been spreading along, so I'll be mentioning some of that. So these different classes are of course interested in different aspects of the uh, aspects of astronomy. For instance, some people are simply interested in going out and looking at meteor showers and comets and planets and so on, whereas other people are interested in going to the sky surveys, looking at deep focused observations, incorporating view observations as Jonathan was showing earlier. So what you see here, for instance, is a deep quieted image. So the WWT clearly is a relatively recent addition, but you can do lots and lots of uh, things and many people have started trying doing all these things and starting right from high school students. So even high school students can learn making tours pretty quickly and one especially, uh, one feature that they really love is playing around with orbits and so on because it's easy to set two times, say I start on this date and this is my end date and give the total length for that particular uh, transition to happen and sure enough the planets or the satellites move gradually from time A to time B and you can see all the motion that we have been seeing in the earlier part of the day. Plus uh, the important thing of course is that uh, in time domain in which I work it's easy to it's easy to incorporate all these things. So uh, sky alert uh, which we use to announce the CRTS transients in real time there we have been using these things and again uh, some students are into making worldwide uh, telescope tours using those, so we'll see some of those. So just like the view, there are layers of access available, amateurs, you can just look at the transients, this is the citizen science mode. So because we are putting all these transients in real time in WWT, people can just say, so Jonathan showed how the supernovae sky can be looked at with those big blobs. We show them as circles, so people, and the circles change color as the transients age. So by looking at the colors, one can figure out what are the newest transients. And if one wants to simply track the transients, one can simply look at it. And professionals can use these to make finding charts and tracking the various wavelength changes. Again, an example of that was shown earlier. And of course, for educators, it's lovely to make different kinds of tours. So in India, we had uh, two workshops. One was in Bangalore with the help of uh, Microsoft Research there and the other one was at the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics in Pune. In both places there were several tens of people who had come who had deliberately kept uh, the numbers low so that more time could be spent with those people. And as I said, solar system was an instant hit. It's easy to uh, do various tours with those. And one particular example that I had, uh, I, I toured Kerala after that and there uh, I was demonstrating all these things also. And there were some undergraduate students and some high school students. And in a matter of about half an hour, the high school students were teaching the undergrads how to make the solar system tools. And it was just fabulous. So some of the interesting things besides the usual <coughs> planets and so on, is also you can create artificial planets like the Mandelbrot set. And that some of the students liked immensely. Also, besides the planets, there are satellites of all the planets that you can play around with. And very interesting things. Plus, you can create your own uh, planet. Uh, I don't think you'll have time to demonstrate any of that today, right? But the future exists. We'll, we'll so. be talking about reference frames and, okay. and things like so, that. So we use that's it. another fantastic feature that uh, the students loved and they were immediately exploring that. And of course, uh, the panchromatic, uh, all using different wavelengths for the same kinds of objects. And here, of course, all four images are shown separately, but there what you can do, you can easily make a tool uh, which is of 
whatever length you want, which goes from one wavelength to another, and you can see uh, the star forming regions and radio regions and where the dust is and all kinds of things. One of the things that we have been planning and uh, it's still planned partly because the government of India has still not given permission to do that is Chandrayaan was one of the facilities that India had launched so they have a lot of data from there and we want to incorporate that as a layer so that is still in the future that's going to happen but so some of the images uh, look like these and that will give an additional layer to the whole data. So again, there are many people who are interested in doing that and it's being slowly pursued, but just like NASA, the Indian counterparts also, there's a lot of wheels and layers and so on, so that keeps on happening. Two other aspects that we did, which we have not talked about here, uh, are related to incorporating astronomy mythology through stories uh, into various tours. And all different peoples have their own astronomy related mythology and there are slight variations, there are many commonalities. So this one is for instance about the creation of various elements, not the chemical elements but whatever elements used to be called uh, in mythology and then there are whole sets of uh, uh, avatars and um, whatever, lots of cosmo, cosmology and so on that goes on into that. So that is the connection that we are uh, setting up and so various tours are being made related to that. So Orion, as you would expect, uh, appears prominently because it's one of the bright uh, constellations that one sees. So there are various uh, things related to that. Then again, Big Deeper is the other main one from which uh, many stories are appear and of course Polaris because uh, it's the object that doesn't seem to move. So stories related to how uh, it got to be in a special position where it doesn't move whereas all the other stars have to keep moving. So those stories are being made. The other important aspect is about languages, translating the menus to Indic languages. So India is a big democratic experiment, it's lasted 60 years, great, it's going to last hopefully much much longer. So there are a large number of states there, there are 15 major languages in India and 242 major dialects. And so though English is one of the most common languages in India, as you go away from the city centers, quickly you go into regions where people do not speak English and the only language they rely on is typically their mother tongue, which is either Marathi like mine is or Hindi or Gujarati or whatever. And there for them, of course, everybody is interested in astronomy. And to take astronomy to them, what we thought was important is being able to translate the WWT menus in their language and that is what we have been doing. So in fact, even on the WWT that you can use right now, you will find a language bar, you can drop down, change the menu to Hindi right now and many other languages. And you will see the whole thing in Hindi and so people in Hindi can uh, experiment with that. The only thing to remember is which key to press to go back, the position is the same, so if you want to go back to English you can do that. So the interesting thing was this. So initially we planned to do it in three languages because uh, we had volunteers for that and when we had these schools, people who spoke other languages came forward by themselves saying they would like to do it in their own languages. In fact, uh, one group which speaks a language of the Adivasis which is like the Australian Aboriginals or people from who have been there for tens of thousands of years, they came forward, they don't have a fully developed vocabulary but they wanted to do it uh, for themselves and that's also slowly happening. It's of course much more difficult because uh, for most astronomical terms there are no easy translations available in the language. But then we hit uh, another interesting, I don't know what to call it, bug or not, but in one of the languages for instance the structure of verbs and nouns relative to each other is completely different from English and the phrases were very long. So in the menu spaces nothing would fit. And so that's this language, Malayalam, the last one that you see here, which is really a composite language from Tamil and Sanskrit. So there the strings are really, really long and that still needs to be sorted out at some point. I think for German you did sort that out, right? Because even German had something similar. Well, we we yeah. kind of uh, uh, left room for to try to get German in because German is usually, if you can get German in, anything else is smaller. <laughs> well, I think Malayalam yeah, is slightly yeah. longer. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. And we didn't take that into account. Yeah. And so this is uh, one of the worldwide telescope menus. I seen in Hindi, so this is Vishwagapi Durbin Mea Kaswagat hai. 
And once in a while you'll find some words which are left in English because <laughs> it's better to leave it like that rather than being able to translate uh, each individual thing in there. And this is the important one if you want to go back. And then similarly, this is in another language. I don't know all the languages, so I can't uh, read all of them. I know only three from there. And these are some specific uh, menus from some of those, so I'll show them the cloud and Bahir. And then shape file, so again, that was left as it is, things like that. So the planetarium in Bangalore has been active in propagating it further because they have many, many uh, shows there and people show interest in that. Similarly, Ayuka has a mobile lab and they take their outreach to many nearby places and they have been involved a lot in taking this further. And the feature that you mentioned today about the local cat will be mm -hmm. very useful to them because that was the other issue. As you go away from the cities, the internet bandwidth is not great. So there the cell phone costs and so on are really, really low and that structure is okay, but so long as the internet is concerned, it's really uh, bad if you go to remote parts. Right. For cell phone, the typical recharge card there is 10 rupees, which is 20 cents. So you get a recharge card for 20 cents, which can last there for one day with no internet. So this will be very useful. <coughs> Similarly, we had uh, a meeting in um, Cape Town, the South African Astronomical Observatory had helped us conduct that, and that was only a few months back. So uh, the latest thing is that IU has now an outreach office in Cape Town, and they're going to be doing a lot of uh, these activities related to this. So people from the planetarium there were present. And there what we did in a one-day workshop is we demonstrated how to do tours. And then we formed separate groups. And there is a beautiful book that is available for mythology related to South Africa. So uh, it's called The Crocodile Who Swallows the Sun. And some of the stuff is available on the web also. So then the groups divided and started making tours related to this. And they learned things really quickly. They were able to introduce their own voiceovers. Someone composed music there and that was incorporated. Not None of the tours really got completed during the workshop, but all the fragments were there and they are working on it to perfect it further. So they were able to introduce uh, animation. Some people did the solar system related things, some people the larger sky related thing. But again, it's uh, fairly straightforward to learn these things and they did demonstrate it there. So. Uh, all the stories in that book are gradually going to be converted into tours. One of the stories is this hopeless hunter, which involves all these objects of these Alecran, Pelagius, and Orion. And again, Orion stories are common <coughs> across all cultures. So, this particular picture is from the book, and what's uh, laid back there is the uh, WWD area. So again, just like in India, Africa has uh, several different languages and language groups. So in the Cape Town workshop, there were many people from other countries who had come on their own, from some neighboring ones. And in the longer term, there are plans to also uh, do specific things in those countries and have those brought in and do uh, the localization in those languages also. Coming to the science part, our interest is in classification and a classification of transients and there's a big uh, tree of uh, different kinds of variability that is available. And so we use the Catalina real-time uh, transient survey and that is where the transients are published in real time. And <coughs> there are three different telescopes involved in there. So these are published in real time using sky alerts so you can see various uh, feeds as they're called. And this is the time axis. These are the things that happen now, and these are the older and older ones. So you can click on any of them, go to those specific pages. But uh, what is done is that those are also available in the worldwide telescope thing. So you can see the sky, and you can see blobs, and the color changes depending on how old those objects are. So we had a high school student during summer, uh, Daniel Luna. So what he did was that he did one two related to some of these transients. So this sky is the real sky and these cutouts are from our FITS images which he incorporated. So that image is sitting exactly where the transient is and the offset image of course not because it's the same image taken at a different time. 
sorry, actually, this is the central location, and the two fixed images are from different times, which were compared, and that is how the transient was found, and the light curve was overlaid. So this is just one snapshot from the tour that he made. He incorporated several different transients of one type for one tour, and another type for another tour. But again, over a period of about uh, four weeks, he was able to learn all these techniques and make something that is worth a research to. So I think with that, I will stop going back to my original slide showing that how uh, we have been able to use it for all different uh, kinds of uh, audiences. And again, it's as you are learning today and we'll find out more, it's really straightforward to do that. Thank you.